you understand that when you get into the presence of the Lord you don't have to look for a man to bring you pleasure you don't have to look for a woman to bring you joy he said just by being in his presence there is a fullness of joy it doesn't matter what's going on around me I came to declare to the beloved of God that this is your time to rejoice social distance testify to somebody that's on your row and tell them it's time to rejoice well grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ welcome to evening worship with Pastor Wes Taylor Jr. I'm so excited and elated that you've chimed into our program on today I know that there is a word from the Lord for your life it has nothing to do with Taylor. It has nothing to do with human agency. It has everything to do with the word of the Lord that says it will not go out void, but it will accomplish where to it is sent. I'm so confirmed about this word from the Lord for your life one today until I want to invite you to participate with us in the ministry of outreach and evangelism. You know the face of outreach and evangelism has changed in this current context. We no longer go door to door, but technology has allowed us and afforded us the ability to let our fingers do the walking. And so I want your fingers to do the walking and I want you to participate by being a share warrior. That's it. Yes, a share warrior. I want you to hit like, hit share, tag as many people as are in your contact list and just to let them know that the Word of God is about to be released. If you have not signed up for our YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well and hit that bell so you will be updated on all of our latest ministry offerings. Yes, you can become a share warrior. You never know how far your share will go. You can share it with somebody that will share it with somebody that will share it with somebody that needs that word for that season in their life. And you would have been instrumental in providing for them that opportunity. It's time time for the word of the Lord. You still have time to call somebody, text them, tweet them, email them, holler across the room, holler across the street and let them know to get on this YLC network because there's got about to be a releasing of the anointing of the word of God and they don't want to miss it. I want you to sit prayerfully and attentively and we will see you after the word of the Lord. Yes to me. 
thank you for your power that reaches to the highest mountain. Power that reaches and flows to the lowest mountain. It's your power, it's your blood that gives us strength from day to day that never loses its power. God, we thank you for reaching to where we were and pulling us out of the muck and the mire of sin. Thank you, God, for considering us even when we did not consider you. God, you had us on your mind. Even when we weren't, we didn't have you on our mind. You kept us, God. You looked beyond fault. Hey, and saw me. Glory to God. Thank you, God, for looking beyond every fault, every fracture, every tear. Thank you for looking past brokenness and bringing us, putting us on the potter's wheel and reforming and shaping us into vessels of honor. Father, we can't do anything without your anointing. Your anointing is here. Your anointing to here to break every yoke, to loose every shackle. And God, we give you honor and we give, hey, and we give you praise and we give you glory today. We honor your name on today. We glorify you. You're the God above all, in all, and through all. Come on, everybody that agree with me, lift those worshiping hands and worship God. I love Jesus. Come on, sing with me. I worship. I worship. And just want to tell you. of the Lord. So I just want to, I want to put a tag on this sermon on this morning and share with the beloved of God a time to rejoice, a time to rejoice. And prayerfully by the end of this sermon, we will clear that up for you so that you for real can show enough rejoice in the name of the Lord. So this Psalm comes to us. It is a Psalm. Um, it's a Psalm of David. 
And it's a psalm of reflection. And oftentimes when we look at the psalms of David, it is a psalm of reflection. And so this actually, the, the end part of this uh, gives us somewhat of the, the, the purpose statement, the purpose statement of this whole psalm right here. And he tells us there's a, a special place that I could be in that I can experience the presence of God, but not only the presence of God, but also the, the delivering power of God. I can experience that as well. How many of you know that you can experience the delivering power of God even prior to you being in his presence? Because it's his presence that pulls us into or his deliverance that really pulls us into his presence. I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So it's the goodness of the Lord that draws men to repentance. And so the, the, uh, the, the deliverance of the Lord comes um, sometimes as a result of us being even out of his presence. How do you know that, Taylor? Because that's where I was. I don't know about anybody else in this room or that's looking at, looking at us online. I don't know about anybody else, but I can attest to the fact, I can testify to the fact that even by me being out of his presence, he still brought deliverance right there where I was. And so this Psalm of David is a Psalm of reflection. And we have been talking for a while about being in the presence of the Lord because we know that in this current time, Lord knows more than anything, we got to find a hiding place, y'all. We, we cannot find a hiding place in how much money we have in the bank. We, we cannot hide behind how many, how many precious metals we have and how many accolades we have and how, how prestigious and, and, and how wonderful we are. We, we can no longer hide behind those things. We, we got to really, for real, find a hiding place, y'all. There's got to be a place of solace in this time because if, if I can just be real to somebody uh, or with somebody on today, if, if we don't find a hiding place, we're going to go crazy. If, if we don't find somewhere where we can hide and find a place of solace, we just might lose it. We, we, just, we just might go cuckoo. Because that's just the time that we're living in. It's, it's stress and pressures. We talked about stress and pressures on last week. And, and it's those stresses and those pressures that keeps, it's, it's, it's one thing after another. When, when, you, when, one thing, when one thing seems to have subsided, here comes something else. It, it's always, I mean, and, and it seems like in this time, it, it just seems to multiply. And so we have to find a place where we can get in contact with ourselves. And I know that, you know, psychologists and psychiatrists, they tell us, you know, we need to be able to, 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 to center ourselves, to get in contact with ourselves. But, but can I submit to you, and I, I don't throw no shade on psychology, I don't know about all of the, that, that medical uh, uh, um, position and et cetera, so they know more than I do, bottom line. But, but the, the challenge that we've had is that we've become too much in touch with ourselves and not enough in touch with God. I, I'll say that one more time. Because they tell us, listen, we need to be able to be centered. We need, we need to be able to get in contact with who we are and be good and, and, and comfortable in our own skin. But, but they leave out the fact that that's my challenge. That's the reason why I'm where I am right now. That's why all the trouble will come because I've been in contact too much with myself. <laughs> and we, got, we have to be in a, get to a place where we can be in contact and connection with God. So we are pursuing, we are pursuing, pursuing his presence. We're not just asking for his presence to come to us. Amen. I'm chasing after you. That's the praise and worship sings. And uh, every now and then they'll sing that song. I'm chasing after that. That means I am actively involved in God being involved in my life. Got to say it one more time. I am actively involved in Christ or God being involved in my life. If I want him to bring me deliverance, there's some things that I'm going to really have to do so that I can experience the full deliverance. 
I know that he came from heaven to earth to show me the way, but, but get what the song says, to show me the way, because I have to be actively involved in my deliverance. I just can't, I just can't sit at home and, 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 and think God going to do everything for me. If I need a job, if I want the deliverance of finances, I need a job, you know, I got to be actively involved in that process. Every now and then you got to put in an application. I have to be actively involved when I'm pursuing the presence of the Lord and pursuing the presence of the Lord, it comes you all. I got to have a passion for it. I got I to want to do it. Amen. Amen. I have to want to get to where God is. So, so the, text, the text brings us to a place today and, and we're talking about pursuing the presence of the Lord and, and we, we tag this with a, a time to rejoice and we're going to unpack that in a moment. But, but the, the text gives us a few things that I'm going to review because uh, we, we touched on this a little bit before but I, I, I think it's necessary that we, we go back and be able to reemphasize some of these, the strength of some of these things that we need to do in order to really get into the presence of the Lord. So the first thing that David says here is he makes a request unto the Lord based upon his trust in him. He makes a request unto the person whom he trusts. And, th and that's a natural response, Chuck, because, you know, we, we request things of people who we think can, uh, uh, can give us or can provide for us the things that we're asking of him. So, so, so Paul, or, or, or rather David, opens up this psalm and he makes a request unto the Lord and not a request for things. He's requesting that you keep me in you. Can, can we get to a place, beloved of God, where we say, where, where we get away from asking God to give us things and, and, to, and to keep the things that we have and to give us another car and to give us another job and to give us another hat, give us another tie, give us another suit, all these gifts. Can we get to a place where we say, God, I want you to keep me in you. I, I need, I need. I need desperately, God, for you to keep me in you because, because I know that outside of you, there's going to be some things that are going to happen unfavorable to me and I won't be able to control it. But, but God, if you just keep me in you, I, listen, listen, y'all, I can handle what's going on out there if I know that I'm in here, if I know that I'm in him because everything that pertains to life and godliness is in him and in him dwells a full of the Godhead bodily and we are come I'm getting too excited too quick y'all I'm just in the introduction here and we are complete in him therefore I don't have to get completion from a spouse I don't have to be completed by a friend or a brother or or society or my job my bank account don't complete me can I get about 16 folk in here that can testify to the fact that God completes me? Don't get it twisted. I like you, I love you, and the whole nine yards, but you don't complete me. It's God that completes me. It's the word of God that completes me because in the word of God, I found a hiding place. Glory to God. Time out for folks trying to con trying to control us because they think we need them. No, I don't need you. I like to have you, but I need him. I, I need more of his presence. And that's, that's what David was saying. God, David said, God, I want you to preserve me because I need more of you than I need more of what I have. The outside periphery thing, I need more of you. Is there anybody in here that can lift your hands and say, God, I need more of you. I, I, I need, I need more of you. He said, preserve me, O oh God, for in you, I trust in you, God. My trust is in you. And so the first thing he does is that, is that he shapes and he frames for us where his reliance is. Who are we relying upon? Or what are we relying upon? So David makes it very plain here. He said, listen, I'm asking God to keep me in him. Because I put my trust 
Not in horses, not in chariots, not in the systems, not, not in the government, not in the local government, not in the state government, not in anything that's around me, not in all the things that I have, but God in you, I put my trust. That's one of the things that we really have to evaluate when we are pursuing the presence of God. Where are we putting our trust? Put my trust in God. So he goes on here to say, he said, preserve thee. And he talks about preserve, oh, oh, my soul. Thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee. He's saying here simply this, y'all, and I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get to these points here in a moment. I, I'm really excited about getting to the points, but but this right here is good too. He said, "My soul, oh my soul, thou hast sent unto the Lord; thou art my Lord." So he identifies his proper position, which is a great segue digging to our first point in terms of pursuing the presence of the Lord. I have to be able to properly and purposely position him as a primary presence in my life. Here's just the, the review part here. I have to purposely position him. David says, thou, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord. See, it, it's a personal vendetta. It's a personal experience. It goes past just him being God of the cosmos. Right. It, it goes past him just being Lord over all. Because can I, can, I just, can I just give you a news flash? The Lord is not going to stop being Lord just because we don't accept him as being Lord. God is going to be God whether we accept him as being God or not. He was God in the beginning. He is a God right now and he will always be God. And so here's what David does. David makes a pointed, my God, declaration. He said he identifies him as Lord, but then he goes a little bit further. He says, not only, God, this is real good right here. Not only is he Lord, but he's my Lord. See, see, sister, sister Branch, this thing gets real personal after a while. And you know, when, when you have a personal experience with Jesus, when you have a personal Lord, when you have a personal God, my God, you might break out in a dance anywhere. You might be at home and your hand will go up. Why? I don't know why. I just feel the presence of God because he is my Lord and he is my God. There has got to be a personal experience with God. So I have to position him. I have to purposely, y'all, purposely, I'm almost finished, y'all. I have to purposely position him as primary presence in my life. Let's go to verse number eight. Let's see what he says here. He says, I have set the Lord. Whenever I set something, I with intentionally position it. We set the monitors right here because there was a purpose in us positioning the monitors right here. We set the lectern right here. We set the chair. Anything you set is purposely positioning. Lord have mercy. He did not say that this was an evolution. Amen. That the Lord just somehow appeared in my space. Appeared in my life. He said, no, no. I purposely and intentionally set him in proper position in my life. Yeah. That's, what the, that's what David said. He said, I have set the Lord. I have made an intentional decision that God is going to be a part of my life. Those of you that's not married yet and you're dating and you're looking for somebody to date and the whole nine yards, you got to let them know that there is a third party. There has to be a third wheel. Woo, glory to God. 
I ain't talking to everybody, but I promise you I'm talking to somebody up in here to, to help you to tell you, listen, that you got to let them know up front that there is a third wheel in this relationship and it's not flesh and blood. It is the Lord Jesus Christ because I have properly positioned him in my experience. I've, I've got to set him. I've got to be intentional. God, I thank you for that. I need you to social distance testify to somebody and tell them, be intentional. Be, be intentional. Yeah, 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 everything can't be haphazard. Everything can't be just by chance. Everything, some, th some things have got to be a choice. Why do you serve God? Because I want to serve him. Not because my mama served him. Not because my daddy served him. Not because I was brought up in this thing. I serve him because I want to serve him. I praise him because I want to praise him. I magnify him because I want to magnify him. Nobody don't have to tell me when it's time to praise the Lord because I'll praise him whenever I want to praise him. I'll praise him out there in the parking lot. I'll praise him in the church. I'll praise him outside the church. I'll praise him in the grocery store. Why? Because I want to praise him. I got I got I got to purposely set him set him as a primary presence in my life. The second thing according to the text, he said, I have set the Lord. I have set the Lord. Look, look, look at the frequency, y'all. Look at the frequency. I have set the Lord always. Ah, oh, Lord Jesus. If I'm going to get to verse number 11 to get into that presence of the Lord where there is fullness of joy, these are the steps to being able to enjoy verse number 11. I can't enjoy verse number 11 if I have not gone through the experience and intentionally set him as a position in my life. And the next thing he says is, I have set the Lord always. The second thing I have to do is after I intentionally position him, I have to intentionally position him as a constant source in my life. He's got to be a perpetual presence. This is not going to set too well, but I'm going to go ahead and go with it anyway. Because, um, you know, you, 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 just can't, you just can't have God on Saturday or Sunday. And God, I don't need you on Monday. Some of our lives reflect that behavior, and, and we in this in this pandemic, we really we really y'all have got to get to a place where we where we are per permanently and, and perpetually pursuing the presence of God, positioning Him, and also not positioning Him just when we need something from Him. Lord, can I just help me? Can I help somebody out there? Because our prayer life, it seems like our prayer life just, you know, there, there's something called experience, you know, the credit reporting people. And, and there, there is a, I don't, I don't know how it works out, but you know, there's something to this whole, this whole credit reporting system. Because Experian has this thing called, now, it's called credit card, or credit reporting, or credit uh, points boosting. Did I say that right? It, 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 yeah, that's it. It's called Experian Boost. And what they do is that if you pay a few more dollars, then they'll boost your credit score. I, I don't know how that, because somebody's controlling the credit score system. So, so I, I don't know how, how they do that. But, but nonetheless, what they do is you, you give them a little bit of money, and, and they will boost your credit score. And the only time that we, we access that that credit boost or experience boost is, is when our credit score has seemed to be lagging a little bit and we needed a boost because we want to get something because we want to get something. Maybe I want to apply for a car. Maybe I want to apply for a house. Or maybe, you know, I want to apply for some insurance. But but the bottom line is y'all know where I'm going with this. Yeah. I, I want to get something out of this so I'll, I'll pay additional money so the experience can boost my credit rating even if five days later it goes back down even more, it doesn't matter as long as I can get. 
Y'all, y'all, ooh, God. As long as I can have it at a place long enough for me to get what I want out of it, then I'm good with it. So I'm willing to pay the additional money so that I can get the experience boost so I can get what I want. God, I'm coming right to your doorstep right now. I'm coming to get you. I know, I, y'all know, y'all already know who I am with this. Some of our prayer lives and some of our, my God, presence and experience with God is the same. God, I'll give you an additional prayer. I ain't talking to everybody elder, but I guarantee you, I'm talking to about 15 of us. It's, God, I, I, I get up early in the morning this week. I, I, I'll turn down my plate because I need a credit boost. Can I tell you that when you do the right thing, I'm using the credit as an analogy, y'all, and, and I'm just all done. Listen, when you do the right things in terms of the credit you, and, and, and your credit score is where it need to be, you don't need a boost. So you don't have to pay additional money that you probably didn't have anyway to get a boost from experience because my credit, my credit report or my credit score is already where it needs to be. Why? Because I've done, I've managed my life enough. Y'all, God, I, I, I have managed my money and my finances properly so that my credit score is where it needs to be. Now I don't need to do extra stuff to get a boost because it's already where it needs to be. How many of you know that when you position God perpetually and he's a, per, a constant presence in your experience in your religious in your Christian experience my God you don't have to make deals with him and say God I'll pray three times a day because I want to get something out of you God I'll turn down my plate because I need my body healed because when you are in a perpetual place of his presence everything you need that pertains to life and godliness is already there. How many of you know that when you position God right, everything you need is already yours? I need you to holler at somebody on your roll and tell them it's already yours. It's all, it's already yours. Last thing that I'm done, and then and then we're gonna talk about them. Yeah, I, I'm done. Last thing, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get into the presence of the Lord, if I'm gonna experience this presence in verse number 11. He said, I've got to purposely position him. Where is he in our lives? I've got to purposely position him. We talk about that a lot. I don't know why God keeps sending me back to that, but, but for a reason. We have got to purposely position him in our lives, and we've got to pos- position him as a perpetual, as a constant presence. He's got to always be my go-to. Not just when I need something. You know, when, when your children grow up, when your children grow up, it's good to be in relation. I'm using children because I got children. When your children grow up, it's good to be in relationship with your children and they have a relationship with you enough so that um, when they come to you, they don't just call your number just because they need something. Some of the parents in here can testify to the fact that they get on your nerve. You don't ever pick up the phone until you need some gas money. You don't ever call and just say, hey, how are you doing? And that can get on a parent's last nerve and the nerve after that. Because you, you don't ever call me until you need, whenever the phone rings, whenever your name come up on call ID, I might as well go to my checkbook. Because I know that you're going to need something from me. David, this writer says, if you're going to really experience verse number 11, you have to position me as a constant and perpetual presence. Not just access me when times when you need something for yourself. 
But the last thing is real good, y'all. All of it is good, but, but, but listen to this one right here. If I'm going to experience the presence of the Lord, he said here, I have set the Lord always before me. Here's the reason. Because he is at my right hand. So because of that, Sharita, he makes a declaration. He tells us what he's done because he wants to paint a picture for us of what we should do. If we do what, we, what he's done, then we will get what he got. Glory to God. That there are people that's hating on you because they want what you want, but they're not willing to do what you've done to be able to get it. They're not willing to have to cry all night long to get that next anointing. They're not, they're not willing to have to work five years before they see a turn in, in their business, before they see any profit at all. They're not willing to push the cart up the hill. They, they just want what you want, but they don't want to go through what you had to go through to get what you got. If, if you knew what your neighbor had been through to get to where they were, you would just retract your application and say, no, that's all right. I'm good. I just, I just be where I am right now. But, but you don't know what folk have to go through to get what they have got. But there are people that will hate on you because they want what you have. And, and David is saying here, he said, listen, you can have verse number 11, but chronologically speaking, 11 never comes before eight. Social distance testify to somebody and tell them, you gotta walk this thing out. You gotta, you gotta walk it out, man. You, 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 you just can't skip from 8 to 11. You can't, you can't go from verse number 1 to verse number 11. You got to walk this thing out. He said, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. And the final thing is, is he makes a declaration based upon what he has done. First of all, he set him, he positioned him right. Second of all, he positioned him as a permanent presence in his life and not just uh, some resource that he can go to when it's convenient for him. But then he makes a declaration about his position and his stance after these two things. So if I'm going to experience, verse 11, if I'm going to experience the, 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 the presence of God, I've got to purposely determine that I have positioned myself, I have set him as a perpetual presence, and I will not be moved. Lord have mercy. If I'm going to experience the presence of God, the fullness of his presence, I've got to make up in my mind that while I'm here, I ask God to keep me in verse number one. I ask the Lord to preserve me in verse number one. While I'm asking God to preserve me in verse number one, there is a responsibility that we have to what we have asked of God. The responsibility is right here in verse number eight. He said, because God, I have asked you to preserve me. I have made up in my mind that I will not be moved. Glory to God. Woo! People of God, we cannot be swayed by every wind and every doctrine. We cannot be swayed by everything that's coming up that's pop culture, that's popular, popular in society, popular in Christian culture. We cannot be swayed by everything that's novel and new, that's hot and that's popping. Every now and then you got to sit yourself down somewhere and you can grow. Elder Crosby, he's raising a, he's got a garden. And one of the counterproductive things that he would do, sis, in gardening is when he plants his
cabbage. Every four days he goes up and pick up the cabbage and put it somewhere else. Next four days he go and pick up the cabbage and put it somewhere else. Next, it's not going to grow because the roots will not develop. God, Lord. The roots will not be able to give, be given a chance to develop so that it can reach the nutrients in the soil. God, I praise you in here so that it can grow. But every now and then you run in the folk, they love the Lord today and they questioning him tomorrow. I love you Lord today and I'm living like I don't know what tomorrow. We have got to make up in our minds that we shall not be moved. If me or any other comes and preaches any other gospel that has already been preached, the Bible said, let them be a curse. Don't let everybody speak life or speak words into your life, laying hands on you. My God, I know some of us, you know, we call and ask Peter Pop off. I ain't throwing no shade, you know, for the little spring water and the whole nine yards. But how many of you know that when you understand that you got the power of the Holy Ghost, you can take your own bottle of Dasani Deer Park whatever it might be you don't need to pay no $25 for somebody to send you no spring water in the mail I already got the water and it's a well of water that's bringing up in my soul I hope Popoff don't write me and say, man, look, you messing with my sales here. We cannot, people of God, be moved. Every time the new thing comes, we're moving here. God, I tr- he made a declarative statement here in verse number one. And I got to stop because if I don't stop, I won't stop. He made a declarative statement in verse number one. He said, God, I want you to preserve me because in you do I put my trust. Yeah. In other words, what he was saying here, I'm not putting my trust in my ability. I'm not putting my trust in my natural, physical relationships. I'm putting my trust in you. When you trust something, even when it looks like it's going bad, you don't move. Because I trust God in the process. Go ahead and social distance testify to somebody and tell them trust the process. Trust the process. You, you, you it, it, trust the process. I know, I know the winds are blowing. I know that your rockly dawn has risen, but trust the. I don't know who I'm talking to out there, but I came as a prophet of God to tell you to trust the process because in as much as God has allowed you to get in it, when you trust in Him, He will keep you and He will preserve you while you're in it. So then after we come from there, y'all, we can go on down after we have properly set him, after we have set him as a permanent presence. God, he's got to be all the time in your life. And after we have made a declaration, I'm not going to be moved. Then here comes the results of what you have Experience and what you have declared. He said in verse number 11, you will show me. You will. <laughs> God, can I just say this to somebody? If, if you stay in place, he'll make it clear to you. Lord have mercy. I ain't going to be popular today, Elder. If you stay in place, he'll make it clear to you. You know, when you're constantly moving like that, things get fuzzy. But when you stay in place, things will get clear. He said, thou wilt show me the path of life. 
He will show you the path. The path indicates that this is the way that you should take. He didn't say that he was going to transpose you from one place to the next. He said that he's going to show you the path. And as you walk, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I will show you the path that will lead you to happiness. I will show you the path that will lead you to success. I will show you the way that you shall take and win. I need somebody to holler, not at your neighbor, but just holler in the atmosphere and say, when? When I shall come forth. Lord, somebody... That's my segue right there to the time of rejoicing. Because I like the way the King James Version puts it here. Because he frames this or he, he terms this, he topics this as miktam. Miktam. A psalm of David or miktam of David. And so, the reason why he termed it miktam, 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 is a musical cue. Remember here, we're dealing with a song. And so, what he's saying here is that this is a musical cue to your time to rejoice. Because by the time you set him in place by the time you declare him as a permanent presence by the time you determine that I'm not going to be moved and by the time he begins to crystallize the path that you should take he then begins to say that in thy presence Lord is a fullness of joy But I can't experience fullness if I haven't properly positioned him, if I haven't made him permanent. Oh, God. And if I have not declared that I will not be moved, doesn't matter what's happening around me, I'm going to stay right here until I get my breakthrough. Don't matter who says what around me. I don't care if the winds may blow. The storms may rise. But I made up in my mind that I've come over here to stay, Lord, until I die. And how many of you understand that when you get into the presence of the Lord you don't have to look for a man to bring you pleasure you don't have to look for a woman to bring you joy he said just by being in his presence there is a fullness of joy it doesn't matter what's going on around me I came to declare to the beloved of God that this is your time to rejoice social distance testify to somebody that's on your roll and tell him it's time to rejoice because David said in his song that this is a mic time in other words this is a musical cue it's time to strike up the band because I'm getting ready to go into a praise it's time to strike up the band because I'm getting ready to rejoice but guess what even if the band don't join me I will bless the Lord is there anybody in here that made up in your mind that after all I've been through, but because I have properly positioned him and because he is a perpetual presence and because I made up in my mind that I will not be moved, then I can experience the presence of the Lord. And in the presence of the Lord, there is a fullness of joy at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore and whenever we're in the presence of the Lord we can dance before the Lord David said that in the presence of the Lord or oh, he said I will 
yet praise him doesn't matter of my surroundings but I will give God the glory I came in here before I take my seat because I feel an anointing now before I take my seat today to tell the beloved of God that when you're in the presence of the Lord the storms may rise the winds may blow but I still got my praise and it's time to rejoice it's time to dance it's time to raise your hand because you know that in as much as the storm is raging I've got the God of the storm on board with me and it's just a matter of time for God's gonna get up and he's gonna tell your storm to shut up it's just a matter of time what God's gonna get up and he's gonna tell your storm peace be still it's just a matter of time before the God's gonna get up and tell your storm to take your hands off of his son it's just a matter of time before God's gonna get up and tell the demon of sickness take your hand off of her body it's just a matter of time before God's gonna stand up and gonna let the storm know take your hand off of his finances take your hand off of that relationship take your hand off of that body take your hand off of that life take your hand off of that mind take your hand off of that church take your hand off of that pastor take your hand off of that son take your hand off of that daughter but before he does because I trust in God I'm not gonna wait until it comes to pass I'm not gonna wait until I get it in my hand but I will I will I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord is there about 15 folk in here that can make up in your mind that I'm not gonna wait until the battle is over because it's time to rejoice and I'm gonna rejoice right now I may not have it in my hand but I got it in my spirit and I can see I can see the breaking of day I can see my blessings on the way shout yeah shout yeah This is testify to about five people and tell them it's time to rejoice. 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 Well, welcome back. The word of the Lord has gone out and it will not come back void, but it will accomplish whereto it is sent. Perhaps the target of that word today was the fertile soil of your heart. If perhaps this word has gone out and it has pricked your heart and you have not come into full realization of a relationship with God and you've decided on this day, I want to give my life to the Lord. I want you to put that in the comments. I surrender and someone will reach out to you and walk you through the next steps of discipleship. If this message of hope has been a blessing to you, I want you to consider planting a seed of faith so that we can continue our programming, so that we can continue to propagate the message of hope to a dying world. The methods by which you may give are on the screen right now. Please, ma'am, please, sir, use one of those methods and plant a seed of faith so that we can continue to propagate the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, our time is up. I have enjoyed once again this day, this evening with you. Thank you for tuning in to Evening Worship 
with Pastor Wes Taylor Jr. We will see you on next week, next Sunday at 4 p.m. God bless you.